We recreated a scene from Ghostbusters, which is one of my very favorite movies, so it was a lot of fun, and here's how we made it. When casting the three main Ghostbusters, I wanted to make sure and try and get their looks to match up as close as possible. So for the role of Peter Venkman, which is the part played by Bill Murray in the movie, we reached out to our friend Nate. Nate was in our Jaws scene in our homemade Catching Fire trailer. For the role of Ray, that's the one played by Dan Aykroyd in the movie, we reached out to comedian Ron Babcock. He actually was in our Red 2 trailer playing old Bruce Willis a while back. Ron is actually bald, so we just put a wig on him. The good thing about that was that Ray actually wears goggles in this scene. Ben made these goggles using some clear safety goggles, and then for the two circular parts, he just cut the top off of like a water bottle and a Gatorade bottle and painted one black and one silver and glued them on there, and it looks really cool. So that goes on Ron's head and sort of covers, you don't see the wig as much that way. And then for the role of Egon, we have Danny, who was with us in last week's Psycho scene as Norman Bates. I told Danny to just see if he could blow dry his hair or something and get it as high as possible for Egon, and then we just put on those glasses and that was it. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. And then I played the hotel manager and our friend Ace stepped in to play the bellhop who stands there next to the door when they come bursting through. Since I'm such a big Ghostbusters fan, I actually made my own Ghostbusters outfit and proton pack in 2007 using all kinds of really detailed parts and components. Not exactly a homemade style, it was kind of an authentic replication of the original suit. So I had the actual flight suit, I got actual patches, and I built this proton pack from scratch using metal and wood and bolts and I spent about a month making it and it was a kind of elaborate thing. It lit up, it had electronics and batteries. It was like full blown, it's a pretty awesome costume. But for homemade movies, we don't have that much time. We had to make three of these things and we had to make them fast. So we wanted to set out to make this outfit from scratch using more homemade materials that anybody could use. So for our suits, instead of starting with the actual flight suits, which you can buy online if you want and they're about 50 bucks a piece, we just bought some really cheap, flimsy kind of tissue paper painter suits. So those are a couple bucks a piece. You can get those at any hardware store, but they're white so I picked up a couple cans of spray paint that sort of is that tan khaki color. That's your homemade flight suit. And then each of them has a little name tag. The real ones are embroidered, but of course ours we just drew with pen and markers. And the little Ghostbusters logo, each of them has one of those patches, so we drew that out and attached it to the suit. So normally when we want things to change color, we just spray paint them. But in this case, with the belts and the knee pads, we're actually taking the time to dye them. It's just gray writ dye. It's only a couple bucks, and you just mix it with water. So we put that in a bucket and let these things soak over the weekend. So since these have foam in them and they're floating to the top, we're gonna weigh them down with bricks. All right, so the knee pads and the belts have been soaking all through the weekend, so we're getting ready to take them out of the dye, see how they look. Can I really get those in? So once we had everything attached to these, these suits actually are pretty fragile, so be careful if you want to use these as a costume or anything. The zipper, once we painted it, didn't really work very well. It popped open and the armpits ripped really easily, so you got to be super careful getting in and out of these. They are quite flimsy. They're like tissue paper. All right, so the proton packs. These are very important. Ben made these three things. He created a base of cardboard. He went to the 99 cent store and got a lot of Tupperwares and used a lot of lids. The round piece that is the cyclotron actually is the same exact piece that we got at the 99 cent store that was the jaw in our Ninja Turtles outfits. He used ketchup and mustard bottles, he used a empty Pop-Tarts box, some straws, whatever it took to kind of get the basic shapes. He painted it all black, and then there's some silver stuff, there's some little knobs and things, there's some little wires on there, so we just used some rope and some string, painted the rope blue, red, yellow, made the different colored wires. There's kind of a computer ribbon on there, so he just used some party streamers and painted them and drew some lines on there. Instead of being attached to a full frame like the real ones are, we just put straps directly into the box, and Ben made it so that they could be adjustable, so once the actors wearing it, you can kind of clip it into the right place and it stays in place. This is called the Hero. This is anytime you make multiples in one of them, it's like the best quality one, it's the Hero. So this is going to be simpler, you're not going to have as much of the detail work because it's pretty much just to show that the other two guys are wearing something. And then the Ghostbusters all have the wand that connects to this proton pack that they're wearing. We started with a base of a plunger, a rolling pin, and a square Tupperware. Ben added on some other little details, and then the wand itself is attached to the pack using a garden hose that we painted black. We actually could have bought that same material that they use. They sell that at hardware stores, but it's actually really loud. I found that out when I made my proton back all those years ago, and we knew that we had dialogue that was gonna have to happen, so we tried to think of something that would be a lot quieter, and so we figured a rubber garden hose would do the trick. Ben's always hanging out with his hose. Hey -o. Hey -o. 
All right, so then it was time to make Slimer. It's basically just newspaper stuffed inside of plastic grocery bags. Ben built this thing. He really just had to get the shape just right. He built the arms and that was also just newspaper wadded up with little fingers and stuff. And then the plastic grocery bag over the top and some little sticks in there that you can kind of stick it into the body. Then it was just painting the whole thing green. We used a very bright fluorescent green. Problem with that stuff is it doesn't stick very well to the plastic bag. So once the paint dries and we even used a lot of clear coat, it just kind of flakes off. So a lot of it came off, but for the most part, we were just very, very careful with it. And then his mouth is just drawn and glued on there as well as the eyes. So shooting with Slimer was a lot of fun. We just attached him to the ceiling fan, happened to be right where we needed it in the middle of the room, and then sort of draped the ropes and the streams over the top of him and kind of wound it around and had him coming down the sides. We wanted to have his arms flailing around, so we used some fishing string attached to his arms so that when we're getting those close-ups of him, we just pull on the arms and they go flailing around and he just kind of shakes all around and we just flash a flashlight and flick at the light. When they're lowering him with their streams, we actually just looped some some fishing string through a wire and at the right moment we're shaking everything and we're flashing lights and we just lower him really slowly so that you can see that he's descending. So the streams are just made out of rope. It was a yellow rope that we started with and then bought this really really bright fluorescent paint and then we used a blue rope that was a little thinner and sort of just wound it around and kind of attached it in certain places. So between all that and we're just gonna shake it around it sort of looks like their electricity streams coming out. So to attach these ropes at the end of the proton wands we just stuck some cup hooks in there so the end of the rope has a little loop on it and then we could just hook it on when we needed to and you could stand in place and then just shake it around really good. But then the other element here is that we wanted a really bright light coming off the very tip of the wands. So we just put flashlights actually on the tips of the wands but pointed directly at the camera lens. So you get a nice cool glare out of the tips of the wands. All right, and action. So in homemade movies, we usually try as best as we can to match up every little detail in the shot as far as the composition. So this is one case where we didn't really quite have the same scale as they did. We are not shooting in a huge banquet hall like they were. We went to my friend's house because she has a little bit bigger dining room than I do with a taller ceiling. So at least we have three Ghostbusters and Slimer and the streams and we kind of just tried to get the overall look of it and the composition but just kind of scrunched down on a small scale. So after we got all those wide shots in my friend's big dining room, we kind of just came back to my house to do some of the insert shots. So that's just some of the close-ups of the people with their streams and so we just flickered the flashlights and Bosco's standing up at the ceiling like waving the stream so it looks like it's wiggling around. For those close-ups we weren't exactly sure what we wanted to do for the look of the wands because there's a lot of electricity and sparks. We found this little feather that kind of moves around in a cool way and we thought that has a sort of a look of like sparks and if you shine a light on it, it looks really cool. We actually did a lot of the shots with Egon using the little feather puff thing but once we painted it orange it sort of lost some of its fluff and it looked a little bit weird. Bankman shorten your stream I don't want my face burned off. So we ended up trying a different way, which was just going back to the trick of attaching a flashlight that points right at the camera. So we did a whole pass with those and that ended up looking a lot better. Bankman, shorten your stream. I don't want my face burned off. Just before this scene is when Peter gets slimed. So in the close-ups of Nate, instead of trying to use like Vaseline or anything actually slimy, he dunked his head in the sink and just let it all drip down. And that kind of stands in for slime. That'll wake you up. Also back here at the house, we did the shot where Peter pulls the tablecloth out from under the flowers. So we just kind of set all that stuff up on my dining room table. You know, if this homemade movie thing doesn't work out, we might open our own party planning business because we're really getting the hang of it. So we want to make sure that these flowers do stay standing, so uh, when Nate pulls the tablecloth out from under them, I think I'm gonna attach some fishing string to actually hold the flowers in place. That way when he pulls everything else, they sort of stay put in the middle. So we practiced the move tons of times. We had Nate kind of going through the motions. And? We did a bunch of takes where he didn't actually go through with the full pull, but we wanted to make sure we had it all down pat. In the background of the original shot, somebody throws a chair in the background even, so we just threw like a piece of styrofoam in the background. This is our chair just to you know, have all the pieces there. But when we felt like we had it down and the timing was right, we went for it and we did it in one take. Action. Wait, 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 wait. I've always wanted to do this. And. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> we had a hard time finding a place that had double doors that open like that and the only place we could really think of that was convenient was my back door. Obviously this is supposed to be in a big fancy hotel but it was in the shade so we just kind of covered the glass with some cardboard so it looked like a solid door and then the Ghostbusters just come out. So they're actually just coming out onto my back patio. There's a bunch of inserts of the trap and we spent almost an entire day just doing those inserts. So this trap is actually one that I built a couple years back for a totally different video and it's just mostly cardboard and some little screws and some paint. So for this video, I was happy to use that again. And the first challenge was really getting it to slide across the room. So we use some fishing string and just pull the string. And so it looks like he's actually throwing it, but really it's just being pulled across the room. 
It's magic. We use the trick again of taking some light blue yarn and sort of wrapping it around. That sort of looks like electricity. It's electricity, folks. It's electricity. This time we also used some shiny purple ribbon that we kind of like dangled around. So that sort of matched some of the stuff that they did. All right, so when he kicks the trap, there's some electricity that flows through it. So once again, we're using the yarn and we're just going to drape it, but we're hiding it underneath. So that way, as soon as he kicks it, the fishing line can pull it up and over the box, down around a hook, so it'll go up and over, and then hide behind his foot. So the electricity just flows over real quick. One of the shots, we kind of really wanted to see the beam of light coming out, so we set two flashlights in there, and we just put a little puff of smoke with a smoke machine so that the lights kind of hit the smoke a certain way. When the trap closes, there's a little blinking light on the side, so instead of trying to hook up electronics or blinking light into the trap itself, we just stuck a little piece of red plastic in there that's going to serve as the light, and then I just hit it with a laser pointer and just sort of blinked it on there from a distance because it really just illuminates the whole thing. We're using lasers. And that's how you make a homemade Ghostbuster scene. Who am I gonna call? That Ghostbuster over there. That knife made it far over there, man. That's a nice distance. Oh, man. All right, there's a hole in our bucket, um, <laughs> apparently. I've always wanted to be Harold Ramis. I've always wanted to be J.J. Abrams. <laughs> Warning on licensed nuclear accelerator. <laughs> Pay no attention to the fact that this bucket says pee on it. That was for something unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun making this homemade Ghostbusters scene. It's been a favorite movie of mine since childhood. Let me know if you have any other questions on how he made it. And stay tuned to Cinefix for more homemade movies. Now, where'd that slammer go? I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Ah, a ghost! <laughs>